Welcome back guys. We are getting ready to drop down here into the valley and uh, build our wiki up, get our winter shelter and the hunting camp set up. And this right here is the way down. Rainy out today, so we're going to do us a bit of mud skiing. That'll be fun. This is the easy part. Right up here is where things get a little bit more interesting. We gotta make it down this drop, which is always fun. I love you from up here though, right? Okay. This is going to be slick as shit. Okay guys, I uh, selected my spot to set up my winter hunting camp and it's going to be this area here, one, I already got a stockpile of wood ready to go to uh, help me build my shelter. It's up out of the floodplain. <coughs> the creek actually runs down about maybe 50 feet below this peak. Uh, we got some hemlocks in here that'll stay green through the winter. Uh, plenty of open ground. That's got a lot of tough, so the ground's soft. Down there is the uh, river valley. I got access to water that's not too far away. And another thing about this area is I am completely surrounded 
by hills and cliffs. This just happens to be a shelf. Uh, nice flat level ground that I can work with. Uh, plenty of open area for activities, gathering up wood. A lot of moss and stone in the area that can be used for different things. Um, and it's just a lot of natural wind blockage, rain blockage, and uh, these pines and hemlocks will catch a lot of the snow whenever winter does set in. So this is just prime shelter territory. Uh, my first thought was to go on down here. You see this ridge here? And build my shelter tucked up against this hillside. I'd use this hillside here as kind of a windbreak. Uh, this is a north face. Um, but I'm thinking that down there is too much of a low lying area. I think the uh, ground will get too soggy down there. So uh, there's a bit of a trade off there. If I want drier ground, obviously I have to be at a higher elevation. If I want more wind block, then I go down lower end of the valley. Uh, this is halfway down this area that I'm in now. Uh, still got plenty of evergreen, the hemlock, the pine, all of that uh, stuff that will stay green all year round, catch a lot of the snow and give me a, a windbreak in the winter time. So yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna tuck in right here uh, amidst these trees. Go ahead and get the frame of it set up. It is a rainy ass day out here today. I wanted the rain because uh, whenever I start putting the leaves and everything on the wiki up, it'll help pack them down and they won't just blow off on me. So uh, I'll go ahead and gather up some wood, get the camera gear set up. But this is one of those episodes where I want to focus on the task at hand and not actually filming the episode. So I'm gonna be having the tripod uh, set up out of the way a little bit while I clear this area out and start uh, stacking up the wood for the wiki up. And we're going to get this thing up as quick as we can. And we're going to make it kind of a hybrid shelter. So uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done and I need to be getting to it. So uh, without focusing too much on filming the episode, uh, I'm just going to work on the work. And I'll keep, get back with you guys in a little bit. Alright guys, I gotta admit something here. I was uh, getting ready to do the setup and I put my my backpack and my other bag down and I was getting ready to do the site. I get over to the area when I, where I want to build the wiki up, nice level ground, and I'm moving this log and it's got this like fire looking fungus growing on it. So I go to grab my iPhone and my iPhone's not on my belt clip and I didn't know where I dropped it at. So. I had to backtrack all the way up the ridge that I set that I was sliding down to get down here to find my damn iPhone and this kind of shit. And my iPhone is in a black uh, otter box. So, uh, yeah, I was not fucking happy. I but I, I was lucky enough that I, you know it's wet out here, and as I was coming down, I was being messy about it. I left a hell of a trail. So I actually followed my own trail back up that damn ridge that I had to slide down. And just retraced my exact footprints until I found my damn iPhone. I, w I was so mad that uh, it just dropped out of my belt clip. You know, usually my OtterBox belt clip uh, holds it in there pretty snug, but sliding down that hill. I'm guessing what happened according to my tracks is as I was sliding down the hill, I came up on this log. And as I stepped over the log, it must have jolted it out of my belt clip, because that's where it was laying at. So uh, I got some of my some tracking practice in, uh, and I had to track myself, which was ridiculous. Uh, I'm glad I found it, man. I was I was uh, a bit nervous there, but now I'm lucky enough that that uh, the hunting camp uh, isn't too deep into the woods, so I can get back here pretty quick and get to work. But I just burn up about. 20 minutes having to backtrack and look for my damned iPhone because it fell out of my belt clip. Man, I was not happy camper there for a second. Uh, and that iPhone, uh, like I said, I'm keeping it in my, in my pocket now because it's starting to rain a little heavier. My otter box is waterproof, but better safe than sorry. Uh, look at it, it's just, it's black. And trying to find this thing amidst this shit, 
was uh, I thought it was going to be an impossible task. If I hadn't have been so sloppy sliding down that ridge and leaving the trail that I did, I, I would have never found it. So yeah, I, I wanted to get that on record. I fucked up. I was coming down too sloppy, too hard, too fast, uh, and I wasn't paying attention to my gear. I guess I just didn't have it fastened into my belt clip snug. And as soon as I stepped over that log, it just dropped out and I didn't even hear it drop. So I had to uh, retrace my own footsteps <laughs> to go uh, find an iPhone in the middle of the goddamn woods while it's raining out. And it happened to be in high weeds too, which didn't help out a bit. <laughs> but man, whew, that was a dumbass rookie mistake. So now I gotta get back up here and get to building. I burned up a little bit of time that I got to make up for, so, man, guys, had me nervous, had me fucking nervous. All right, I want to go on record real quick and say this is about the only time you're going to see me cut down a sapling to build a shelter with. I don't like cutting down live trees any more than I have to, but in this situation, I need pliable wood, green wood, for the ribbing of the shelter, and I want something that's going to tighten up as it dries, uh, and that's just going to give it a lot of stability. So I mean, I'm going to go ahead and cut down some of these saplings that are in my way. Uh, I'm only cutting down the ones that are in my way. I want to leave the rest of them because they do offer a bit of a windbreak uh, as they mature. So I'm going to cut down just enough to give me the ribbing around uh, the wiki up. And then uh, I'll come up with some way to replace what I took.
the rain came. Simple bit of progress so far. Got the main beams up. Got the first uh, run of ribbing put around it. Nice and simple, quick and easy. Uh, that's green wood for the ribbing. It'll uh, tighten up as it dries. I'm gonna keep weaving it around. I'm gonna do another layer down below. And then I got that whole stack of wood over there that's all ready to go to put up on it. They're shorter pieces, so they'll actually be laying up against the ribbing. So my next layer of ribbing, I want a little bit heavier. Uh, I can drop the diameter down as I go up because the material is not going to be so heavy But I want a good solid foundation and I want that bottom section of the walls really really thick I want that really heavy wood down there That uh, cuts out the draft and that's going to be my main windbreak whenever I'm sleeping in this thing so uh, Got it all tightened down at the top uh, Ran a bit of cordage through there to tie it all up together with I got some more cordage that I'm going to be putting around it after we get the wood done so, starting to rain a little bit more now. All in all, a good day, minus losing the iPhone earlier. Uh, progress on this is going really fast just because I have the supply of wood right here at this site with these uh, down trees. I'm using mostly dead wood aside from the ribbing. Like I said, uh, I'll replace the saplings that I'm taking out of here with something else. So, <sighs> work in progress and we're going to keep on moving just like this. benefits of having a really fucking sharp axe. <clears throat> In spite of its simple design, one of the biggest challenges to building a uh, wiki up like this where it's all covered with debris like a debris shelter is gathering up all the debris. Uh, you will, in order to put a sh shelter like this together and have it thick enough to protect you from just about any element, you'll pretty much strip the forest floor of everything that it has to offer. We've made pretty good progress on it so far, but I still got a lot of work to do and the rain is picking up a little bit heavier. Uh, you got the old... Uh, Swedish torch, the miniature Swedish torch that I uh, made, burning in the middle of it, um, and I'm burning that in there, one for heat, one for light while I'm inside, getting out of the rain, and uh, the smoke from it will help drive out any uh, bugs or nasty little critters that's in the debris that I'm throwing on top of it as I keep building it up and building it up and building it up, but uh, I think you guys get the picture so far, right? This is just the first layer. Oh, well, I did my initial... Uh, uh, stack and then I did all of the uh, lattice work and stuff like that a lot of this material that I'm throwing up here has lattice material in it It has small twigs uh, very pliable uh, wood in it. So I got lucky Just because of the area and the kind of trees that are around here that I'm using to gather up the debris This is stuff's just full of sticks and all of that lattice work is going to work together Hopefully it'll pack down in, into a nice tight insulative layer. The next layer is going to be some uh, of these hemlock bows and then another layer 
on top of it and layer and layer and layer until uh, I get it stable enough that where it's about a foot thick is what I want it. So, uh, work in progress, guys, but I've only been at it for a few hours. That's pretty good progress for a few hours of work. I'm gonna get back to it. Home decor. Oh, okay, I needed a brick. I've been at this thing for a few hours now, and we got one bulky son of a bitch. Check it out. I did all this in one afternoon, but it's been nonstop for hours too. Uh, obviously, I don't need my opening that big. I'll be closing it in. Uh, but like I said, this is a bulky, big sun bit. Uh, I got it extended in the back, so this back portion would probably be the sleeping dome. I would put extra insulation on that uh, that triangle you see right there. That would have uh, extra layer insulation because that would uh, be reflecting the heat back from the inside fire. For one, that's your back firewall, so it's going to reflect the heat down on me while I'm sleeping back there. Uh, I, you know, I put these up here. This uh, tree trunk, it's kind of punked out a little bit. It's still got some sturdiness left to it. I'm hoping. Uh, that that offers it some good stability and helps pack this thing down uh, but yeah that this back side would be my dome for sleeping uh, and then up here it could go a little bit lighter but not much and I wanted a little bit lighter in the front just for the ventilation purposes I did leave ventilation at the top of the structure uh, and then we go on the inside uh, I still have I don't know if you guys can see I have uh, plenty of room to stand up you know completely stand up inside of the structure um, almost to the peak, but I have enough uh, room to stand up and stretch out if I want to like if I'm pinned down in here in a snowstorm or any kind of storm uh, I can do that. I do have uh, some structural things that I need to work on obviously um, So I got this thing up to my height I can stand up on the inside of it. I got a lot of bulk to it uh, You see these larger pieces so I did my framework. I did all of the uh, basic lattice work that you do to the structure. Uh, then I uh, gathered up just about everything the forest floor had to offer me, piled that on there. Then I took some of the hemlock bows, the low lying hemlock bows that I didn't want gouging me in the eye. I put those on there to hold down that initial layer of insulation to help keep the wind from blowing it away whenever the stuff dries out. And now I'm adding 
even more logs on top of that initial layer of insulation. Once I get that up, I'll lattice it again and add one more layer of leaves in the fall whenever all this stuff starts falling down. And I'll have four layers of protection against whatever winter throws at me in this wiki up. So, not a bad deal so far. Not bad for a uh, few hours worth of work. But I tell you what, I am getting hungry, I am getting thirsty, and uh, yeah, I think I'm about done for the day. Uh, I don't want to, you know, kill myself doing it. Building a structure like this, as simplistic as it looks, is not easy, and I could always come back out here tomorrow, and the damn thing's laying on the ground, because something in there just didn't settle right overnight. But I love the color pattern, I love how it sort of camos in a little bit. Now... All of those uh, pine, all of that hemlock that you see in there, those pine needles are going to fall right off, and that's just going to be lattice work. I want those needles to fall off uh, because one, they're going to just go down to the base of the structure and give me that extra buffer down at the bottom. But whenever they all fall off, I have this real fine lattice work that I can use to put more leaves and debris on top of it. So that's why they are there. Uh, once all of those needles fall off, I got great lattice work that I can uh, keep packing shit on here with. All the way around it. It's a beautiful structure. I love that color. Look at that color. And that white uh, wood just kind of pops in there. Uh, like I said, I do not need the opening that fucking big. But uh, for right now, it's okay. I'm actually going to put walls in both sides. That'll help support the structure a little bit. I'll get me some, uh, just some Y sticks and then lattice it out and uh, do it that way. I got plenty of room in there for... The campfire, uh, my gear on one side, sleeping quarters all the way in the back. That is plenty long enough back there. I know you can't see because it's so damn dark out here, but plenty uh, long enough back here for me to put in a uh, uh, raised bed. So I'll be gathering up the wood that I need to make the raised bed get up off the ground, you know. <clears throat> so the ground's not sucking the life right out of you whenever it gets cold, and it's going to get cold fast. Uh, but yeah, not bad for a day's work. I like it, and I still got plenty of wood over there to work with. All of that shit, I can either cut up for firewood. It's actually still in pretty good shape. Uh, it's not punky or anything like that. This tree fell down uh, maybe last year. Uh, so if I get to it, I can get this stuff cut up for firewood. And, uh, yep, the, some of that back there is punky. And I might split that up and use it for uh, fencing or a border around the base of the structure uh, to help kind of hold everything in. Uh, but whenever I'm building something like this, I see one pinpoint of light. I don't think the camera's going to make it out, but there is a pinpoint of light on the inside there. Um, make sure that no light can shine through. If light shines through, cold air gets through. If cold air gets through, rain gets through. Uh, so once you get the structure up and it's dark as shit, just like this, you can't see it on the camera, but there are there it is. You see that pinpoint of light right there at the at the center of the frame. Uh, those points of light are what I would go around, and that's just your later uh, patchwork. A little smoke action going on. I'm actually letting this smoke a little bit. I want to see how uh, the smoke gets out of the ventilation that I left at the top. I want to make sure that it's breathable. Uh, right now, it's coming out the top portion of the door. So, what I got going on here just for this test is I got this uh, miniature Swedish fire log smoldering on the inside, no open flame now. If there was an open flame, an actual flame there, it wouldn't be smoking so much. But uh, I wanted it to smolder out just so I can get in here and uh, watch how the smoke is flowing out of the structure to see if I need to open up that top a little bit more. Uh, and I might. So far so good, I think. Um, if I was sitting down in there, I'm below the smoke level as it's holding now. So this is just a test for the inside fire to see if I need to open that top up a little bit more and uh, make sure I get plenty of ventilation. I don't want to get smoked out of there uh, in a bad storm or any situation really. Uh, so it's just uh, some testing stuff going on now. Uh, the smoke test, make sure that it vents properly. Um, and if I do want to bring in fresh air, I could always uh, make me a vent down at the base of the structure so uh, fresh air is flowing in and it helps push that air up and in the winter time a uh, cold draft like that will push the smoke out the top so if you have a little bit of a draft 
that's just pushing oxygen in there. It'll get your fire warmer. Uh, you're not going to lose a lot of heat by a draft on the floor. It's just going to make sure that no carbon monoxide builds up in there, no smoke builds up in there, and runs you out of your own damn shelter. So, uh, yeah, just testing the structure right now. The rain's getting a little bit heavier, which I like because, uh, and that's one of the things, that whenever I came out, I wanted to come out while it was raining uh, because all of this uh, material on the ground here is it's very wet and it just packs right down. It's not fluffy, it don't have all that air in it, you know, like whenever you're uh, trying to build a debris shelter with leaves, if they're all dry, you just pack and pack and pack and pack, but you got to get all that air out of there. If it's wet like this and you're building your structure, it's already packed, and uh, it's really easy to build a de debris structure like this with wet material, and then you just let it dry out, and as it dries out, it just packs itself. Um, it, the material on the wood and everything being wet like this just made it more pliable. Um, it went on a lot easier. It didn't just slide down. It didn't have a lot of fluff to it that I had to, to work out of it. Uh, and... Uh, Get the old log put out here. Um, yeah, it just worked out. Uh, I'm happy with. I'm happy with that wiki up. Like I said, it's a bulky son bitch. It's got some weight to it. But uh, I have the ass end of a hurricane coming in tomorrow, so we got major thunderstorms coming in, uh, and I needed this thing to be a tank, just so it can take uh, a heavy uh, thunderstorm head on right from the get before it even has time to settle. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the structure throughout the storm, but it's a good test. I put it up today. It's going to get tested tomorrow. Everything Mother Nature's got to throw at it's coming our way. So it's going to be high winds, heavy rains, um, and we're going to see if this tank holds up. If it does hold up, uh, then I'll be proud of it. If it doesn't, it means that somewhere in there uh, I made a fatal flaw in the design, and it's got to be in the lattice work. Um, I imagine there's going to be some wind damage to it, uh, and that's fine. Uh, the, whenever you have a wiki up or a debris structure, this is kind of a hybrid wiki up debris. It's not just, you know, log, 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 log. Um, so it's kind of a hybrid of a wiki up and a debris structure. Uh, whenever you're doing a project like that, uh, you really do have to uh, maintain them. They do take a lot of work to keep up. You're always adding to it making it heavier, making it thicker. Uh, this is a new campsite, so, you know, whenever I come back here after the initial test of the, of the wiki up is done, we'll be putting in the indoor fire pit, which means we got to go down to the creek and get the stone for the indoor fire pit. We're going to do an outdoor fire pit, which means we have to go down and get the, the stone for the outdoor fire pit. And then we have two more layers to put on top of that thing. Uh, I got another layer of... Uh, debris that I that I'm going to throw up there and then we're going to be going out and uh, Packing the entire structure down with moss So that's going to be the final structure whenever that is all done. It's going to be covered in moss so um, That moss if it takes onto the wood and everything that's there you see I got moss all over the place And I'll just be transplanting this moss right onto the structure uh, If that moss holds up and it don't just die um, then I'll, I'll have a good solid dome because the the root system of the moss, even though it's very fine, uh, will help hold all of that together. And it's amazing insulation in the wintertime. And it also keeps you cool in the summertime. So you're going to end up with an earthen dome as I'm adding all of this material to it. It's going to break down. All of this organic material is going to break down and basically turn into mud. But it happens to be mud that's got a lot of tensile strength to it because, uh, check this view out. <laughs> yep. So camp is right back there through the woods. And there is the uh, drop off down to the creek. <clears throat> and there goes a the fireball through the sky. Right into the water. If you want to make sure your campfire is out, just throw it into the river. <laughs> Sorry for the distraction. Um can actually see it right there that's the new huntsman camp uh, all this moss up here this shit here this is what we're going to be transferring down there I don't want to strip all of it away because this is actually uh, stopping a lot of erosion uh, I actually don't want to take it off of this side I want to take it off of the forest side 
and I can do that on up here a ways. Uh, but yeah, that's stopping a lot of erosion. I don't want to take that barrier away from the cliff. <coughs> and I just really need to uh, transfer enough moss onto the wiki up to where it takes itself and it'll, you know, spread across it. That's the uh, idea anyway. I just sort of seed it and it just spreads. Um, the other idea that I had is bringing in ivy vines and just letting ivy cover it. Could do that. Could do both. Could do the... Uh, the moss and the ivy that might be a nice uh setup so uh like i said we got the structure done today uh it's going to settle during this storm that's coming in tomorrow well the storms are the, like the first part of the storm is already here i'm already in the rain um, which is fine uh, it kept everything cool while i was building it, and i got hot enough that i had to take my jacket off and i was sitting there thinking this is fucked up man i got a waterproof uh real tree hunting jacket and I had to take the damn thing off in the rain because it got too hot while I was building the wiki up to keep the damn thing on uh, but we got the structure up we got two three layers of uh, material put on it now the, that heavy storm is going to come in tomorrow and all of that material will, will settle onto the frame I'll get to see where I need to do my patchwork at whenever I come back out uh, yeah, and then we just add to it. We patch it up, you know, whatever holes came around. Hopefully the damn thing's not all laying on the ground. We have to start all over again. I don't think it will be. It's pretty solid. I mean, I, I knocked it around pretty good. Uh, pushing it down uh, to settle everything. And I could do that just because it was wet. Um, I think it'll take the storm. And I think it'll hold up all right. I do have uh, synthetic cordage on the inside. Um, and that is kind of a storm anchor it's just wrapped around each of the main logs and it ties them all together into one structure let me check something here all right we're good yeah. so that wiki up campsite is going to be a primary filming location uh probably throughout the fall we're uh in the northern valley just south of the deer herd so uh, it's a pretty good location um, we're far enough away and far enough down that uh, any activity that I do up here is not going to bother the herd and uh, that'll take us uh, through hunting season I did want to get back to some outdoors stuff like I said we're getting away from the wildlife uh, I've covered all that in the series uh, before uh, we're moving on to a lot of different things and if you guys caught the live stream last week uh, my 1k special live stream from inside my treasure room uh, that offered a little bit of insight as to what's going on as far as my creative process goes with the series so um, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, that was a little bit more personal it was out of the woods um, and it was behind the scenes what you know what goes on while I'm coming up with all these ideas, we're back to this spot. Look familiar? This is one thing that I have to consider in the winter time is crossing this creek uh, to get to camp. Whenever that thing freezes over, um, I don't know how it's going to act. But uh, as you can tell, it's rainy as fuck out here right now. And we're just going to be working our way back up through the woods back to the truck um, one thing I wanted to bring up uh, I didn't film a lot of the construction of the wiki up because I've seen um, I've seen other fellas you know out in the woods and uh, they'll just set the tripod up in a couple of different spots they don't talk uh, or anything like that they're just building and building and building and it goes on like that for like 10 15 fucking minutes and it's just watching them guys, watching them build their uh, camp. To me, that's boring as shit. Like, uh, okay, I get it. You know, I see you using your fancy knives, your fancy tools, all this other shit. Uh, but get with whatever the fuck it is you're going to talk about already. And whenever I come across those videos, I tend to skip ahead of all that long-winded shit. Um, they're like Stephen King whenever it comes to building their camp up. Uh... And I don't. Th I didn't want to do that too. Look at this guy shining in the rain. 
just glistening. He's loving all this rain. <laughs> it's actually very slimy. It's almost like wax. That boy's waterproof. That is pretty cool. It, it didn't come off on my fingers. It's not slime. It's like a waxy film on there. Protecting it from the rain. Kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, what I was talking about, uh, I didn't want to do the long-winded show you guys every damn step of building a wiki up. I'm sure you guys know how to build a damn wiki up. Uh, you don't need to see me do it. You saw me start, you saw me in the middle, and you saw the end product. Well, close to the end product. Uh, <clears throat> and I think that's all you really have to do. If you're building a camp, give them, you know, a shot at the beginning, the middle, your completed camp get to the motherfucking topic already you know I really didn't have a topic in mind uh, for this outing I just wanted to get out here and get the shelter built before uh, the ass end of that hurricane comes in and we get hit with it because I want the shelter to take a good hit uh, so I could check its stability did a few tests on the shelter uh, as soon as I got it up got a few more layers to put on the shelter before I can say that it's completed right now we have a a pretty awesome looking structure we still got more debris and the moss to put on it so oh that's fun shit still coming uh, this is the uh, this is the climb out of the woods uh, and it just goes on steady incline for about uh, half a mile and it gets steeper and steeper and steeper this is where I lost my iPhone whenever I was sliding down here to film and now that it's raining like this, it's going to be a motherfucker getting back up it. But that's okay because I got the GoPro strapped to my chest and if I start sliding around, <laughs> we're going to get that shit on film. Um, but yep, yeah, whenever you're making videos, you want to hold your audience's attention. And uh, if your audience is like me and you're filming this 15 minute intro, uh, I'm not watching it. I'll skip it. Uh, yeah, so you're still not getting your watch time, even though you're trying to extend, obviously extend, the length of your video by filming all this, uh, crafty shit. Whew! The hike out of the woods. Steady incline the whole way. I, maybe I should start, uh, jogging like Hannah does. Just every time she's out jogging, I'm gonna go jogging too. I use that as my motivation. Uh... Yep, like I was saying, I was happy that we got the wiki up up today. Uh, we got a few layers to it. It is a bulky tank of a son of a bitch. It didn't need to be that bulky, that heavy. But uh, I'm in a snow belt. It's got to be able to hold some weight. Um, and a lot of the stuff that's on there is going to settle down and shift around a little bit. And I sort of took that into consideration while I was putting it together. It's just lattice, coat, lattice, coat over and over and over again until you got a good sound structure. Uh, I can't wait to get out here and be able to uh, do an overnighter in it. Uh, but like I said, the structure just isn't quite ready yet. Now if I was in a survival situation, I could hunker down in there and I could have plenty of material around where I could patch it up if need be. But I'm not in a survival situation. This is setting up a new campsite south of our deer herd and uh, a new spot for filming some bushcraft stuff instead of just tracking animals and doing all of that other horse shit. Uh, it gives us a base of operations and that base of operations happens to be pretty goddamn close to where we started this thing in the Cab Cottage across the creek. So uh, we'll be getting back there uh, for too much longer. See if we can run into the boys that's got the camp right next to mine over there. That story is yet to play out. So many things going on all at one time. I got the collaboration coming up. You guys seen the first teaser for it? That's going to be some awesome shit. Uh, the people that I'm bringing in for the 20 person collaboration, uh, they do not play around. They are professional uh, filmers. So, uh, I'm gonna have to turn this around here and focus on this bitch of a climb. It's slick. We got the collaboration coming up, as I just said. Uh, 
we got some more of the urban exploration stuff coming up. Um, I do have a trip uh, to downtown Cleveland that I want to take. There's somebody down there that I need to go see. I want to go see, I should say. So I'll be doing that. And we'll be doing, uh, I think we're going to be doing a live stream from downtown Cleveland. And uh, film an episode down there on urban survival and tactics. See my footprints where I first came down here? I can still see my trail going up there. I'm actually taking the same trail back up that I did coming down. Uh, and it is slippery as shit. There you can see where I slid. Human tracks. Uh, on this incline, I stay close to these uh, fallen trees in case I need something to grab a hold of if it start tumbling down the damn hill. And it is a long way down already. steady this kind of shit sometimes me whoa <laughs> won't leave that in slipping trying to film and go up this muddy ass hill at the same time I'm stupid I warn people against this shit and then I go out and do it but situations like this kind of make me miss living in flat ground area like where I grew up at there was back there man there wasn't a hill around for 30 fucking miles not a single hill it's just plains grasslands and farmland as far as the eye can see flat as fuck and the only hills that you would get were at the river bottom and that's because the river cut them out up here it's different this is ice age landscape up here I mean this is ancient shit Glaciers cut this shit out, and the glaciers were not playing when they did it. Okay guys, this is the part where I had to go tree hopping. I'll jump up, that's about six feet from me. I gotta jump up and grab that tree, swing over and grab that one, swing over to that one, and then swing over to the down one keep from falling down the hill so uh, hang on <laughs> there we go <laughs> that was fun it's like Tarzan without being in the treetops because the trees are all on the ground this is a bitch of a climb to get out. So much fun getting down. Such a bitch to get out. And like I said, think of what this is like in the wintertime. When all this shit's ice and snow. Uh, I probably could have found an easier spot to build my camp at. But I like that spot. It's a beautiful spot, isn't it? And uh, I didn't want easy access. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Almost to the top. But, this last quarter is all loose stone and shale. And whenever it gets wet, like this point wet, it wasn't so bad when I was first going down, but it's been raining ever since. Whenever it gets this wet, it's like fucking trying to walk on dog shit. It's not fun. And I have no anchor points, which really sucks. All of the trees have been washed out of this section. I might have to try to make the leaps of that one. If anything, this kind of shit will keep you in shape. Camps down there somewhere. All right. I'll 
I'll tell you what, man. I hope I am never down there at that camp and get a serious injury and have to try to make this climb out. Because I'm in pretty good shape and I keep my weight between 135 and 140 on purpose. Like, I'll starve myself to keep my weight between 135 and 140. Because I'm more about speed than I am power. And uh, I just live my whole life like that. Uh, it goes back to my martial arts studies. You get too big, you can't fucking move. And you gotta be able to carry all that weight, which means burning up a lot more calories to power your body. That's a different topic. Uh, but a serious injury down there and having to make a climb like this out, well, it could be damn near impossible to do. Because, like I said, I'm in pretty good shape and these inclines kick my ass. They get to your thighs, your lungs, your heart rate and pulse just skyrocket. It is a bitch. But it's the price you pay if you want to get out of the way. And also a good, pretty good excuse to gorge on a shit ton of food whenever I get home to uh, get my energy back. You know, wife don't say too much about it. All right, we are out of the woods, folks. For those of you who want more details on how I built the wiki up and uh, would like to see more uh, of the building process, maybe some how-to steps um, to help make them secure, leave a comment down below. If you guys want to see that kind of thing uh, from me, you haven't seen it enough from other channels, uh, let me know. If you like the, let's get it up, get it done, get on to the topic, let me know. You guys' feedback matters. Um, I want to film what you guys want to see. We just built a, a new camp in a couple of hours. Uh, I think it's going to be an amazing spot to film at. I think it's going to be in a, some amazing experiences for camping. And I think it's going to be a great spot uh, to go and rest during the hunt. So uh, we'll wait for this storm to come in and pass. I'll get back out here, uh, see what needs to be repaired, see how well the structure itself held up. And then we'll get to uh, building our fire. Uh, we'll build us a cooking tripod. Everything you see in a bushcraft camp. Um, We'll get that front face put on the wiki up. Uh, build us a couple of contraptions. Might br uh, build a windbreak on the west side. That'll help uh, draft snow around the wiki up instead of just letting it pile up on top of it. Control some of that wind, some of that uh, snow weight a little bit. All things to consider over the next few days while the storm front moves through and uh, you know I get back to my normal work week uh, get back out here as soon as I can. We'll check the structure, see how sound it is, and then we'll be moving on to some outdoor survival bushcrafting shit. Uh, I think it'll be a nice uh, relaxing break from some of the other stuff that we've been doing. Uh, we can come out here, we can cook, we can do overnighters, we can hang out, um, talk survival, talk bushcraft, talk the woods, uh, talk some myths and legends. How would you guys like to hear some stories? Uh, wood lore stories, um, uh, stories that, uh, how they used to pass their wisdom down from generation to generation back in ancient times. Some of the stories about forest creatures, uh, forest mythology, and, uh, even forest war tactics, uh, so that some of the ancient peoples used, uh, as survival psychology, uh, war psychology, and tactics. And, uh, there's just so much shit that we get to cover on the Huntsman channel because we're not inside a pretty little box. So now that we're all the way back at the top of the valley, look at this guys. There she is. Huntsman's Emerald Forest. Where all the damn magic happens. Thank you guys for coming with me. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next week.